Yes, computer. Hey, Michael. Uh, okay. Um, we're on the air. So tonight's agenda um, is primarily Ken War talking about uh, his narrow band work and how to take and process. I did, did want to get a couple things out of the way first. Uh, Ken War is set up to do the TAIC, the Astro Imaging Channel presentation, a week from this Sunday. Uh, they do record it uh, and, and upload it to YouTube. So if you can make it, great. If you can't, it's uh, it's going to be available. And Ken War is going to do a great job representing the mass fits. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's yet to come. Um, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see see our group in in front of the the big part of the world. <clears throat> uh, the other thing I had is the, the logo. Uh, I just wanted to kind of like bring that to closure if we can. And Steve, you you got the latest version of it. That if we can all hold hands on that and say this is at least our first cut at something that we can use. We're going to do some stickers, print some stickers. And for using a identify stuff with, so can you share that, uh, Steve? Sure. Share screen. Can you see this? Yes. So that's where we are so far. It's been tweaked by a lot of people in real time <laughs> about a month ago, and I think. Uh, Actually, Mylan's here, and he he put in the last tweaks, but we really don't know where we are with this. Do we like this logo? What do you guys think? Very much so. I mean, it, it captures. I think it looks great. I like it. It, it captures our astrophotography theme, the MAS theme, our MassFit's uh, name. Um, what else is it? I mean, is it Maybe somebody's got a better image in the background, but that's that's pretty classic. Yeah, good old Orion. Good old good old Ryan. Unless I hear otherwise, let's let's just say that's it for now, and uh, we can always, I guess, at a later date, change it. But yeah. uh, Clay Clay said he could get some made, or some some of the rest of us, I can get it done. Uh, but we'll have MAS pay for it. And um, shouldn't be a lot of money anyway. So I'll I'll make it available to everybody on the Slack channel. So if anybody wants to order any T-shirts with that on there, you just drag it, and uh, you can order a T-shirt on your own. Silly yeah. question: Is that uh, is that your Orion, Steve? No, that is the Hubble Orion. I wanted to uh, use NASA's uh, <laughs> version of that uh, because it is public domain. We get to. First of all, it was a really good image, and we we get to uh, use that without any hassles. Great. Well, let's lock and load this one, and then um, again we'll re we'll revisit it sometime later date, maybe next year, whenever it's appropriate. So, okay, okay. Uh, the agenda tonight uh, I sent it out a couple of times. You, you have it in front of me, I'm sure, but it's it's primarily Ken Moore uh, pre presenting his uh, uh, narrow brain imaging process. And then I want to spend some time at the at the end to talk about the uh, future agenda items, so we can plan next meeting and and have, give time for people to be prepared. So, Kenwar, uh, you're up. Sure. Let me share my screen. I, I assume we can ask questions as we go. Yes, you can. Okay. Just let me know when you guys uh, can see my screen. Yep. Yes. Um, Looking good. Hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Ken Bra, and today I'm going to talk about narrowband imaging and the imaging workflow that I use to process the narrowband data. So those who don't know or even tried narrowband imaging, oh, so narrowband imaging is taking pictures using narrowband filters, which are hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, oxygen three. 
So what are we going to discuss today? So first of all, we're going to talk about me. That's of course. And then we're going to, um, um, I'm going to talk about why did I switch to narrowband mono camera from, to, from color camera? What kind of equipment do I use? Uh, what kind of uh, calibration frames do we need for narrowband processing? questions at the end, but feel free to stop and ask any questions anytime. So the first is about me. I have a master's in computer science and I'm a full-time software engineer and my work keeps me busy most of the time. And so whenever I get time from my work, from my family or the weather, I do my astro stuff. Um, I got my first telescope in May 2020. It was a Dobsonian 12 inch, and I saw Moon and Orion Nebula with it. So once I saw those, I wanted to capture those. So I got my Astro uh, equipment and captured my first image, North American Nebula, in July 2020. So everything. What I'm learning after that is from that day onwards. So why did I switch from to, uh, to narrowband from color? I'm going to talk a little bit about that, what is color camera. Everybody might be aware of it. I'm just going to be quick about it. So what is color camera, the sensor in it? The sensor in the color and the color camera is coated with a small um, blue, green, red, pixels, they form a pattern called as bare filter pattern. It's basically, the most common is RGGB, means in, in two by two, there are two pixels of green, one pixel of blue, one in red. So one pixel, one complete two by two captures the whole color palette. In narrow band, this filter, different color filters are not there. Since the filters are not there, color filters, so there's no bare pattern in it. All the, fill, all the pixels absorb the color that is transmitted to it through the applying filters in front of the sensor. So if you apply filters like blue filter in front of the sensor, it will cap all the pixels uh, sensor is gonna capture blue filter. Same with the red and keeps on going. So why did I switch? So what made me switch from color to mono is that I image from my backyard and I have a lot of light pollution in it due to the street lights as well as my neighbor's light. So, and narrowband filters cut most of the street, uh, street light pollution because they reject majority of the spectrum of light and allow, allow only a narrow band. Narrow band filters are between three um, to 12 nanometers. And I think the street lights are between, even the red, blue are between four to 500 or 600 nanometers. So basically they cut everything out for me. The other reason I switched to mono is the appeal for Hubble palette. Even when I was doing um, color imaging, I was processing my data using, basically using as a Hubble palette. I used to split my channels in uh, red, green, and blue, then combine them back together as a Hubble palette. As you can see in my images that I took with QHY-260C. These are all using color cameras, but processed as Hubble palette. So what kind of equipment do we need to capture um, monochrome data or what can I, I'm using right now? Right now I have two separate rigs running one is using Skywatcher S3120. It's a triplet. It's using QHY600M mono camera, which is a full frame. It uses its own filter wheel. And because it's a full frame, the minimum it requires is 50 mm filters, which is Astrodon filters. And if I use less than that, like 36 mm, 48 mm, it will create vignetting at the corners. And the mount I use is Astrophysics 1100 with QH, OAG, and 174 mm. 
and the software is NEMA PSG2 and Astrophysics Command Center. The other one that I like is, I like more, this one is, is a Raza 8. It's a 400 mm running at F2. F2 means it's really quick. And I'm using, I'm using with it QHY 268M, which is, I think, a crop sensor with a tilt adapter and 47.4 beta ultra high speed filters. These filters are specific to Raza and works with F2 systems only. I'm running it on true and tested Q6R Pro with a guide scope and Nina and PSG2. Any questions on this one? Yeah, your your AP mount you just got within the last what month or so? Um, yeah, in start of January. And, and, and before that, I before that I had um, CEM seventy, I have strong. Any any startup issues with the uh, the AP mount? No, it's like a good learning uh, curve on it, but I think once I did it once or twice, I'm getting used to it now. But I still have to do the pointing model and everything if I have to capture uh, unguided. And right now I'm doing, I think, 90 point model. It takes like 45 minutes for that. I think people are doing this 200 plus 300 points model to do unguided on this one. And you have the inco absolute encoders? Is that what? I uh, know. No, those are 700, 700, 7K on extra yeah. on those. Oh, no. That's right. That's right. I forgot that. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think US is already has everything in build. LS uh, three fifty. Are you are you gonna? I I, my, I was muted earlier. Are you gonna explain more about the Hubble palette with your color cameras later on? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is required a prereq for? processing monochrome data. We need the data set. So for my example, I'm gonna use Flaming Star Nebula, which is IC405. It has good amount of hydrogen, sulfur, and just little amount of oxygen. And I have, a, I use filters like, I think um, there was like 60 each for SHO. Each one had um, was 500 second subs. Um, thing with narrow band filters is it allows very small um, wavelength of data. So you need to, your exposures need to be longer. You cannot have short exposures on narrowband data because only small data wavelength is passing through the filters. So the filters, so my subs are always 500 to 600 seconds each. And I, I didn't have the RGB. Uh, some people have started using RGB um, subs for the stars, like they capture uh, an RR2. I'm gonna start doing it from next, for my next target. Um, uh, we need to have a calibration frames. We need a dark frame. Dark frame, we just need one dark frame. But for flats, we need flats per filter. So if we have three filters, SHO, we need to have three flats per filter. Same with dark flats. So it's gonna be three dark sets per filter. And then we need a software for stacking and processing. It could be DSS, it could be PixInsight, it could be Photoshop. I used to use, uh, I used to use DSS a lot, but when Merrill and Steve told me the good, good points about um, PixInsight, I switched and never turned back to DSS after that. Hey, Kenwar, quick uh, question. So if you mm -hmm. don't do the RGB for the stars, like, is there any mm -hmm. like for the show filters like do the, do they still kind of come through in color do they look off like what what's the impact of not doing rgb for the stars all, all my images still now i haven't used rgb but i have seen good results using rgb the um, the stars are more brighter and like they have more color into it the 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 hubble palette they don't have color they're all whites so I'm uh, inclined now to use RGB stars because I've seen a lot of people are moving to RGB stars. Just capture like an hour of a data of RGB, just stack them together, get the stars out, then merge them in the end. So I will be doing it, but with SHO, everything is white. So you're no thinking, you only, so you're thinking you only need an hour of RGB. Oh yeah, we, we just we just need the stars. That's it. We don't need any data. 
Uh, so is it an hour per filter or is it an hour for all three? I I haven't used it till now. I think I will do half an hour per filter on an hour combined. Gotcha. For okay. all the I filters. was going to say, I suspect but you would need a whole heck of a lot. But not like three hours because I'm not using anything else except the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything else is like, I cannot put everything, those stuff like RGB data into SHO. Yeah. And I haven't tried it, but the next target I will be trying this and let you know the difference. And, and what camera did but you? But only good for. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I said, what camera did so, you use? Thing I, sorry. Oh, no, oh, go ahead. What camera no, no. did you use to capture this? Is what, what was my question. What's that? I said, what camera did you use to capture this data? Okay. As for this one, I used the QHY 600M full frame. Okay. This uh, set up. Okay. Well, yeah, I did capture this. I think I processed this last week only. So this target was fresh on mine. So I made my presentation according to this. Otherwise, I would have not remembered what I did. I had thought you said earlier you used your color camera and you you created a Hubble palette with your cover, color camera. Did I hear you say that? This is the one. I initially when I was using color camera. Even processing those images in color camera, I used to create Hubble palette out of these. This was an example. These were all taken using color camera, QHY 268C. But during the processing and pixel side, I used to split the channels, then again re re rearrange them as a Hubble palette. Okay. Yeah. So that was one of the main reasons I moved to Mono because I wanted to do Hubble palette. So why not to do it a proper way? Sure. Okay, so I'm talking about stack and aligning of the data. So once we have the data, the, all the subs, the calibration frames and everything, I use rate batch and pre-processing script and fix insight to align, do everything to get me the master frames for all those three, uh, hydrogen alpha, sulfur, and oxygen. To do that, I, I, under the lights, I, I put the lights. Under the flats, I have to put my flats. Under ducts, my dark scores and my dark flat score. And I also apply a cosmetic correction. This is told, told to me by Steve. And I always apply after that day onwards. This is done at the last step. I put it in there. I just run it. Initially, I used to do a blink, like run through each sub and find the ones which have the clouds and everything. Yeah. But when I did one of my targets, like which had like 12 to 1300, um, 13K, um, 1300 subs, and I didn't have time to go through each of them. I forgot about it. I just put everything now in here. I let it run. Yep. It was time. Yep. Instead of looking through the clouds, looking for everything. Yep. Yeah. So once I do this, it gives me three master frames, which is master H, um, S2, and O3. Once I'm done with this presentation, I have the data ready, loaded in PixInsight. I'm going to show you this data over there too. So once I have the master frames output, so what's the next step in uh, processing? First, remove the gradients using ABE or DEB. I would say run this four or five times on each sub. It's not like I run it like once, I ignore it. I basically use it too much, this one. Just take as much as possible the gradients out. Just, just make it image much more clear. I will show the difference between this. Once I move the gradients, the next step is enhance the details, which is using Blurex now. Before this target, uh, which is, was um, Slane and Nebula, I used to use Easy Decon, which was part of the Easy Process suit of Fix Insight. I think I showed you before how do I use it. I use the default settings on that. Mm -hmm. So, but now I started using Blurex. I read about Blurex. I know how to use it now. Thanks. And once, yeah, there's a good um, video from that guy. Who's that? Aaron Block. Uh, yeah. Plus, 
plus the guy who created this. They both had a, a combined video and that was really good in explaining the person who created this Blur X, she told us how to use it. Yeah, that helped me a lot. So once I remove, increase, enhance the details, I use noise X. To check the noise X, I basically expand the image and see then how much is the noise. And depending on, I basically use 70% or 60% on there, nothing more. Before noise X, I used to use MLT, multi-scale linear transform, and another one of those processes in and fix inside. Once I have this, nothing else I do before stretching. These three things. I think I have never done um, um, photogrammatic, photogrammatic color, color calibration or anything else. N nothing else, hmm. on, especially on the um, mono data. So once I have this, I basically stretch the image using STF and histogram transform. Do you do this? Initially, on, I used to do. Do you do this on each slide? I mean, each frame. Or, each frame. All these are per frame. Every step. Every step. I haven't combined them yet. You haven't combined them. Okay. Yeah. So once I do this, I get the master frames. Once I have the master frames. Then is the main advantage of doing mono. You can assign colors, or you can say Hubble palette, RGB palette, or whatever you want to create. It's like your own, whatever you feel like creating the color, you can create the color here. What is the Hubble palette? This is the default. In Hubble palette, it's made by famous by Hubble Space Telescope people, when they capture the data using the narrowband imaging and they assign the colors. What I read about is like they assigned the colors depending on the decreasing wavelength. The sulfur has the highest wavelength, so they assign that color to red. Then is the hydrogen, which is G, and then the oxygen, which is B. Oh, sorry, my bad. Hold on. Uh, yeah. So that's the that's what is called as Hubble palette. Once you have those three master frames stretched then you basically combine them to get a color image. So this is called SHO, R for S, G for H, B for O. You can use your color combination uh, uh, process. You can use your LRGB combination process. It depends on you. If you think your HA data is, separ is like separate than SO, like it's, it's on a different channel, like a, on a different place, if you look at the images, then you can add H as your luminance. Otherwise, there's no need to add H as a luminance. So this might be, this is wrong over here. Yeah. Hmm. I see and, you have, yeah, I see you have chrome, chrome and its noise reduction. Why, why that? After you yeah. Do don't ask me why. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I think I have, I, have, I have stopped using it now, this one. Okay. I think in this one, I didn't use this. I didn't use this image from this one. I use um, RGB combination, channel combination, to use the same thing. Uh, yeah. For this, uh, these channels over there. Yeah. You said you used noise X earlier. I, that was the question. There you go. Yeah, the, the, the noise X was basically, I want to remove the noise before I stretch it. So it's, it's always good to remove the noise before you stretch the image as much as possible. That's the only reason. Sure. Yeah. So. So next will be channel combination. It's like, I'm, this was combined using Hubble palette. If you, wanna, if you don't like Hubble palette, you wanna combine like a normal RGB, then you basically assign HA channel to R, S2 to G, O3 to B, and then you get an image like this. This is the same data with a different, you will see output like this using this image. If you do the RGB combination, you will see the uh, output like this. And the third method, which a lot of people use it, I used a lot before, but I haven't done it for the last few times, is using pixel map. Channel, combina channel combination using pixel map. Hmm. In pixel map, you have the RGB and all those channels, right? So there, you can create whatever you feel like. On R, you create H, 
On G, I gave an example. I created half of S2 into half of O2. And in B, it's O3. It gives you image like this. There, if you go online, you will see a lot of people have different pixel math formulas to get different kinds of images. You can apply any of those. And some people here who don't have um, uh, sulfur two and they want to create synthetic sulfur two, what they do is they do half on um, for G, they do half of H and half of O. So they create a synthetic sulfur. Anything is possible here. Uh, I think I missed one in the slide. Let me tell you about that too, which is called as HOO uh, palette, which is basically used a lot of times on Thor's Nebula. Uh, HOO palette is basically for red, you put H channel, and for G, you put O, on B, you put O again, oxygen again, which creates HOO palette. Which is basically used on Thor's Nebula. I'm aware of that. Everybody uses that on Thor's Nebula. But this one, pixel, uh, pixel math combination, is the one everyone should play with because you can create really, really good colors and combinations with it. So once you have those, um, what we do next? So when we do SHO, like where when we sign Hubble palette, it generates lots of magenta in an SOA, SHO image. So why is a lot of magenta in SHO image? It's because our hydrogen signal is a lot always. And because of that, our S2 and blue channels are stretched more to compensate for the strong HA, which gives us a magenta color in by default in SHO. It always comes in. Whenever you do um, SHO combination, you will get a magenta color in the next image. It's always there. It's because of this. It's a stretching. Even I didn't know that, even I figured it out. Why is always there? To remove this magenta, I think a, a long time back, there was a question in our Slack. I think a few months back. I think someone from Ant's team was doing something. He did a Rosette Nebula, it had a lot of magenta in it too. So that's why I know everybody gets this. So to remove this magenta, there are two ways that I know of. One is to invert the image and do a CNR. Why we do that? Magenta is opposite of green. So we invert the image, run the SCNR with the green, then invert it back. It takes care of magenta or there's a script called as correct magenta stars, we run that. Um, I've seen people who, when they do SHO combination, they get only magenta stars, but not the magenta background. But using this script, it takes care of all the magenta, the background, the stars, everything, the whole magenta is gone from the script, from the image. If you want to keep magenta, then don't run any of these. The other thing that you will notice in um, this um, Hubble palette is images are green by default. They are magenta and green. So why is green? Anybody can guess? It's simple. Um, if you remember, yep, because we assign hydrogen to green and hydrogen is always more, so it makes the image green. Makes sense. Yeah. Even I didn't know that. I just figured it out. <laughs> it's the most abundant yeah. element in the universe, Canwar. So it's go there's yep. going to be a lot of it out there. I, you're more smarter than me, man. You know more. You're more experienced. And I was thinking, why is green? Yeah, so here's the thing with this, like once I have uh, removed my magenta, the next step that I do, especially for this image that I did is, I did a AB and DB again. 
I think four or five times to remove any gradients which come into picture when we did a SHO combined. There will always be some gradients on the corners or some colors and everything that you want to remove. And then verify and remove noise using noise sets. Here, it depends how much you want to uh, remove the noise. For me, how I judge is basically ex expand the image, then check how much noise it is. Depending on that, I run the noise X. Then is something controversial, remove green from Hubble palette. A lot of people have different opinions on it. Some people, they don't remove green. Some people, they basically convert green using a green hue shift. It depends on each person's own perspective, what they want to do. To remove green, we can use Athena. What Athena does is, is it takes the average of blue and red and uses that average and replaces that green with that average. That's Athena. Hmm. Yeah. The other is a pixel map, which I use a lot because it doesn't do an average. It basically keeps the strength of the green signal same. If you think of, if you think as an example, you have um, red at 25%, you have blue at 25%, if you have green at 75%. And if you take an average of green and blue, it's gonna be 25%. It's gonna reduce the signal of green by 25%. So basically you're gonna reduce, you're gonna lose your so much data. That's why I started using that pixel math functionality. I found this online also. The other option a lot of people do, and I did in one of my nebulas, the heart nebula, which I did, is basically I didn't do any of these two. I used the curve transformation hue shift. Select the hue functionality and curve transformation, then do an S curve slowly. It takes care of, it basically converts green to golden um, red color or something like that. So you don't lose any of the green signals. Are, are you going to show actually the setup of each one of those tools later on? Or? Yes, I will. Yeah. yeah. Pixel, particularly setup of the pixel math. You've used it twice in two different ways. You show the setup of that and then show about the, mm -hmm. the hue um, using the curves would be good. Sure. Sure. Uh, once you remove or keep green, you remove the stars. I use StarNet 2 for that. I haven't used Star Exterminator for that. So once you remove the star, you have the starless image and the star image. I always process my image from this point onwards as with starless and only add stars in the last step. So after that, to get from here to here, to the next slide, to this image, it's just curves. Curves in small quantity, small iterations. Not like once big curve, small curves. Basically, if data is red something or yellow something, and this is blue. So to get the colors out, I use color saturation, I just move the slider up to get all the colors, then do curves. You can also do curves using range, range mask. You create a mask using range mask, apply on it and do curves. I haven't done this on this image. And at this point, there's another tool called as color mask in PixInsight, which creates a mask depending on the color that you choose, yellow, red, blue. It, it's gonna take the original image, create a mask of it, and put, you can use that mask to just use update of curves on that color only. I used to use that tool, but I haven't used it any, anymore. So once I do curves and saturations, it basically brightens up the image. So I had to darken the image, the background and everything. For that one, I used to call luminosity mask and use a curve, I think I will use a um, histogram transformation to basically darken it, to blacken it out more, apply it on this image, invert it, then again use, I think, um, histogram transformation to make the background black. 
and which leaves the nebula out back on black. Hmm. So once I do that, um, I do the sharpening. I didn't do too much sharpening on this image because it's already so much wavy length and everything. So too much will be looking bad on this. It will look artificial on this one. So what I did for sharpening, and I think I, 90% of the time I use sharpening is, I use a range mask to create a sharpening. Um, this is something that I use for this one. It basically creates me an image of still here. Then I use local histogram equalization once to sharpen the image. What I notice is if I sharpen too much, it adds noise to the image. Mm -hmm. So I don't do too much sharpening. Um, I have done sharpening on other images using high pass filter in Photoshop and uh, sharpening tools over there, Gaussian filter and everything in Photoshop also, but not for this image. So once you have that, I don't do anything with that image. This image is done for me. So now I work with the stars. What I do with the stars is, I create a star mask using the star mask, uh, star mask process in PixInsight. It gives me a mask. I apply that mask on the original stars that I get from when I did the star net, invert it, then use curves transformation to reduce the size. Basically, it, it reduces the strength of the stars. I will show you that in PixInsight. Once I have the final stars ready from the, like a previous step, I use pixel mesh to combine my stars to the star mesh. At this point, I don't change the intensity of the pix, uh, stars. I basically do the normal plus, not like a percentage of stars I want. Exact stars, how much I have. So after this, these are the optional steps. I do a lot of them. The one is I love is easy star reduction. This is part of the easy process suit. It's written by Adam Block also. And what it does is basically, it reduces the size of the stars and basically sharpens it up, like just like what BlurX does. Even for this image, I didn't use the BlurX on the stars, I use easy star reduction. Hmm. And uh, otherwise the dark structure enhance. This is used for, any nebula or anything which has like a dark nebula uh, in it. This one doesn't have it, so I didn't use it. So if you have like, um, which one? I think um, I see 1319. Um, that had a dark nebula in it. So there I would use it. Basically if you have a dark nebula coming in, it basically makes it much, much more darker. It's like an end step. And then, is a dynamic crop, which I do a lot, and rotation and annotation. Annotation is putting whatever you want to put in front and top. Dynamic crop, basically I came from this image to this image using dynamic crop and rotation. So this is going to be my final image, which I generated from this. For this processing of this uh, data set, I didn't use anything else, just the steps that I mentioned over here. So any questions on this before I talk about it, fix insight. Have you tried using uh, noise X to reduce stars rather than the easy suite? Noise X or blur X? I'm sorry, blur X. Um, I, I tried using the blur X on here, on this, uh, on this capture but it gave me a halo, like a small ring around the stars. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't like that. So I just went back and ran this easy star. Well, and when I ran the same blur X on NGC, NGC 55, it didn't do anything of that sort. It worked perfectly there. Well, well blur X has a, a halo adjustment. Did you? you didn't I think I tried it, but I was not happy and I didn't have time. 
I, I don't have the patience to do it again and again and again. I do it, okay, I have something, okay. I'm gonna do, I have another method. I already have something else which I can run. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting lazy with all these new tools for sure. Yeah, I think it's, um, the BlurRx, I really like about BlurRx is, um, and this one, I didn't use the automatic um, PCS. I used the dynamic PCS, how that guy generated. And I really liked how he explained it. Mm -hmm. And it worked good for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so when you, I'm sorry. Yeah. When, when you take an image, when you, do you use a model in your mind of what it's going to look like at the end? Or you have some other examples you look on the internet? Or you just know what you I look, look at? No, I look at examples. I basically go to the AstroBin, find, basically saw the images uh, for that target using the most likes. Uh, Once I see the most likes, I open the last few of them. Uh, then I see what I what they try to do. I don't see any images. I see the most liked images. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. So at least you try to shoot for something, and I try to shoot it, but they have more experience, so they possess more. And but I try to see how can they do this. How can I do this? Sometimes I just give up, but I try to learn from them. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. I. I and that's the only way. Whenever I have target, or how it's gonna look like, yeah. Well, yes, yes. Kind of when I do the color images, that's what I do is look the best examples I could find are the color ones. Yeah, yeah. You have to uh, because otherwise we have no idea what we're trying to do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna open up. Let me. Let me. Uh, can you see? Still, my see, my see my screen. Yep. Okay. So this is uh, my Pixel site. I have the data open up. I'm going to show you everything that I see. This is the original data after stacking. This is S channel. This is O, and this is hydrogen. I'm just going to compare, and this is after removing the gradients. Just running A B E and D B E. This is edge. And this is as you can compare. It's much more data that came out. Same with S and this S. Especially the O was too much. This was the original O, and this is what I got. It took off every all the gradients, like you see the, all the whitish on this side. It took everything out. And you do that four or five times. Oh, yeah, easily. Mm. I don't stop if I'm not satisfied. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. There's a rule of doing it one or twice, but I don't follow any rules on this one. That's good. Uh, yeah. And the other one. Hold on. And this is the one which is stretched. You see small amount of the blue is this, and this is hydrogen. And you see the stars. Stars are good, but they're not like pinpointy, like they are in uh, RGB. So you're stretching yeah, before you're combining, right, Canwar? You're yes. Okay, yes. good. Yeah. But I don't know any other way. I don't think so. You can, maybe you can combine and stretch, but I haven't never tried that. I always follow this flow. Because I've been processing each each channel ex separate, right? Everything. So I'd rather do everything separate. Like if I want to give much more contrast to hydrogen, right? I can play with the STF settings over here. Same with sulfur. But I want oxygen to be more, so I don't play too much on there. Hmm. And this is the pixel map I did. This is using the normal RGB channel, which is a uh, channel combination, this one. You just put the frames in, use RGB, or run it globally. It's gonna generate you like this. And this was SHO. If you notice, it's a green and it's a purple and everything. You see purple stars and everything. And this was using the SHO, LRGB is the same thing. It's a green also. And 
once I combined them, this was uh, using the pixel, uh, pixel math formula that I used to uh, remove the green in this one. And I think I already did a noise X on this one. You see, I don't see any good, uh, good amount of noise. So that's taken care of. And the stars, they're out and I don't see any star halos or anything left here. And this is before star reduction. This is after, if it, this is like before star reduction and this is after. If you notice the stars here, here, you see the less stars on this one. This is using that easy star reduction tool. And the star mask, this is the star mask that I used on the final image. And I'll tell you how I created it. This was the, this was the star, uh, star mask created by the StarNet process mm -hmm. when I do the StarNet. Here I ran, got this star mask. You can apply the setting, how much you want to take it out. Binarize, run it. It's gonna create a mask. Like this. I'm gonna apply this with a mask. I'm gonna invert it and I'm gonna do a curve transformation to hide everything else. Where is curve transformation? Oh, looking oh, I don't know how to go. Hold on. I can't see. Hold on. See, hold on. I can't see. Does anyone know the? Is it, yeah, go, uh, I wonder how, how all processes would be what I would do. Oh, I can't. Uh, it's hidden it's from seen. me. I just, it's screen sharing is coming up on this. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the screen that it is blocking off. The whole thing is coming. Yeah. It doesn't anyone know the command from that? Oh. Yeah, I, yeah. Choose a uh, go to uh, choose intensity transformations. So that's what it is. It's down and down. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. There you go. Yep. So I apply the mask. You notice I'm going to reduce it. You see the stars going out. This was. Uh, oh wait, let's go. Hold on. If you notice, I'm just going to reduce it. I have less stars now. That's what I did to reduce the number of stars. Initially, I used to um, do pixel, pixel math, reduce like do 0.5 or 0.75 of that star mask and apply it to the final image. But I like this method much, much better. Yeah. It's a different and way of doing other it. One I, what's that? I said that's a different way of doing it. Um, For me, I'm, I just learned about this method. I just learned about this method few, uh, few, um, few, uh, like a month or two months back. Well, remember not too long ago, Adam Block had, did, did this Bill Blanchon method where he had the star reduction scripts that kind of, kind uh, of did that, no, but all, it was all done in the background. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the only method I use from uh, that guy is this one under easy process source star reduction. Is the Adam blocks the emphasis method, whatever. I run this to reduce my stars. This is my backup to blur X stars. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, he <clears throat> Adam used this one until he saw the Bill Blanchard Blanchard method. And he, okay. he was humbled by his method. So, but yours works yeah, fine. Yeah, it works fine. I think it's, 
I'm not sure that this is going to work perfectly when I do RGB stars because the RGB stars is going to be much more pointy and everything. And these are much more subdued and no colors. And I think I need to be careful when I'm stretching the RGB stars because I think if I use STF, I can lose the color. So I need to be careful of that. Hmm. Yeah. So that's all that I have. Any questions? Yeah, well, go, show show this pixel mask setup you did for the you used that a couple of different times. Just show, Hold on, show the me... call that pixel math and just show the settings. You said you did the RGB or the SH. Yeah. Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get that. I have it in my notes somewhere. Okay, let me just paste it one by one. So for that one is go to pixel map for multiple channels. Uh, I'm gonna show you for the one which reduces the green. Yeah, the one I use. This is for um, H. This is from the same guy who told me about um, taking that um, hydrogen out of the red channel. Remember? Um, mm -hmm. Remember yes. when you did MVC50? Yep. Um, I think G and the guy's name is James Lamb. He did the same thing. Uh, he gave me this method. I love that that guy. He gave <laughs> these kind of short tricks. He has a whole video on this one. He explains you how everything takes care of uh, the SCNR and everything. Hmm. Yeah. And. This. Let me find a green image. This. I'm going to run it. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. We have all night. Oops, sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, it's mine. I copied it from the same thing. I don't want to mess it up. Try try parsing it. It will it, maybe it'll show you where the error is. Can I do that? I yep. think I copied it from the Word document. Maybe it has encoding or something. Yeah, let me take it out. But this is the formula basically he used. And I'm just gonna copy that over there. Okay. I use it, it should be working. You put that back in the green channel. Oh, my bad. No, nope. hold on. Let me see. Let me create a new uh, image. I already have um, this one stretched images. I will know the live demonstration then. Uh, I'm going to do SHO. There is the image you see is a magenta image, but I'm not going to take care of do that. I'm just going to run this pixel map. Oh, I think something with this. Oh, 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 this is bad. It's not, it should be in the symbols, not A. That's the reason. The symbols we defined over here. 
There you go. There you go. See, it took out the green. Cool. Yeah, and if you do the same thing um, on this one using SCNR, I have seen the difference. If you do SCNR, the data becomes dull. With that one, it remains good. Hmm. Yeah, so I stopped using SCNR. So when, when you created your when you created the um, SHO by Pixel Math, use use mm -hmm. the, basically. Oh yeah, uh, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me show you that one too. So that one is that is simple. Where's expression data? In R, I want to put where's H? I'm going to create a normal first. Uh, G channel, where is G? Ah. Did I do something? Oh, wait, sorry, my bad. B is, oh, oh, my bad. So, H is, oh, oh, I need to do the SHO, my bad. Uh, it should be S. This is H. Uh, where is H? Over oh, here. So S H O. It's the same image. It's gonna create the same image. But here, then you can basically play around what you want. Right. For any image. Like let, let's create synthetic green instead of normal green. Um, oh, I'm gonna create S synthetic, not H synthetic. So this is S, so I'm gonna do H. It was that point zero five plus I'm gonna do O do zero point five. H remains same. B stains main same. Let's see what it generates. Generates this. So there are a lot of combinations that you can play. How much intensity you want, whatever you want. And if you do a Google, a lot of people have with a lot of good pixel math formulas, like how to create something, different kind of uh, palettes. Hmm. It's good to play around with this tool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But the standard is SHO, which is Hubble palette, the most famous. Yeah. Any other questions? But nobody else, okay? I'm good then. You did good. Yeah, you did a great job. Appreciate you yeah. take, taking the time to do that. You're welcome. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. I'm excited about what I'm seeing uh, there because one, I'm about to start with uh, with the narrowband show filters, and two, Kenwar, I know you're right around the corner for me, so I know what can be done in our neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Just, just, I will tell you whatever I know. Don't ask me the technicals. I'll tell you how to get that thing done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's move on to the agenda just to talk about what we is there before I go into the future, was there anything more we want to cover tonight that somebody wants to discuss and have questions about and about anything? Nope. Okay. Well, there were the the ones we have in the agenda, future agenda is is the Nina. Uh, somebody would be willing to uh, do an overview of Nina, how it operates, um, and then Devin did a fabulous job. I don't think Devin's with us anymore. I guess he was driving his truck too much. Um, he did a great job on M31, and he's done a you know can do a step by step process of that. To show you how how he did that, and then Clay Clay was talking. I think it was Clay that talked about the big amateur telescope, where we all can input to images. Um, he, so does everybody have the agenda in front of them? I'm not I'm not trying to just read it for you. 
but there's there's a lot of different topics um, that are on it. Is anybody willing to do a, a, a great presentation like Ken Ward just did for one of those topics? I don't know if I could make it as interesting as that, but uh, I could certainly run through uh, what I know about Nina at this point. Well, so, yeah, sounds like there are a lot of people using it. Uh, I, I use Maxim DL, but man, I'm sure willing to learn something a new one, uh, new one on that one. And um, and the people, the the ones we had, these all come from you guys. Guiding with PhD, there's there's techniques to there that we can use, um, creating a, a mosaic. I think didn't somebody in this group do a mosaic not too long back? I did. Yeah. Well, um, that that's a skill, and it you know that would be worth you know showing how how to do. Um, this breaking contrast next on the that was an Anna Block technique that that I was going to show what he did to blend different tools to to actually do do the do the tool usage but in a modified way that really came out neat so I can I can do that at some point in time and then basically all the other tools of Pix Insight so <clears throat> does anybody have a desire what to, to tackle next next time I think we can do either the Nina or how to set up um, using the uh, your setup using batteries or like non-AC power supply. I think there's a lot of discussion going on right now. Remember in our Slack channel? Sure. That oh, one. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Well, Brent, did you want to give a, I mean a shortened presentation or a you know, presentation on Nina and and then we can do the power supplies also? I think so. I, I I don't know that Nina. I mean, it, it's per, a pretty quick overview. So probably half on that, half the other. I think we could do okay. that. Well, sounds good. Let's let's just plan on that for uh, next time. And um, remember, February twenty sixth, eight o'clock. Our stars uh, going to be on the YouTube channel, and so uh, if you can make it. It's just the, the Astro Imaging Channel um, is what they what they broadcasted on, and you'll see, you'll see Molly there who did our last uh, monthly meeting. She's she's on the board and she's usually front and center of that group. So unless anybody has anything else we want to talk tonight, uh, I think we had a really good session with uh, Canwar there, and we'll call it we'll call it good. Anybody else? Everybody's quiet tonight. I just say thanks, Kamar. That was that was very good. It was very good. Yeah, it was very You're good. Welcome. And, and can you can you um, that PowerPoint? Can you post it someplace that we can put on the Slack channel? Sure. Just so. I can give it to you. Um, you can just do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, or just you put on. Is it small enough that you can put or big? Small enough you can put it on the Slack channel that people can just download it. Um, let me check. Uh, it's like twenty. If not, we can send it to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll we'll make it available. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Just, uh, thank you all for for joining, and uh, well, stop the. If I can figure out how to stop the recording.